Greetings and welcome my friends. This is Synthesize Me 2. For the sequel, we stripped out green from the deck. The critical pieces of the deck remain the same, but we have the simplicity of a two-color deck. With only two colors, this also lets us play around with some different cards that we can try to use to gain an advantage. It plays similarly to the original, with Esoteric Duplicator and Tarion's Journal playing a big part. Synthesize me, again. We start off with a Singleton Lodestone Needle. It's an artifact with flash that when it enters, it will tap another artifact or creature and puts two stun counters on it. This makes it a great defensive card that we can use to keep one of the enemy tapped while we build up our board. The key to the vault is an equipment that can help us find any piece we need out of our deck. Equip this to one of our robot overlords and get in for a big hit, and we can find more synthesizers or a duplicator. It doesn't improve the stats of the equipped creature, but our robot overlords are usually big enough to not need boosting. Tarion's journal is our card draw and sacrifice outlet. We can use it as hand acceleration, but we also aim to use it alongside the esoteric duplicator to build up robot overlords with token copies of our three mana artifacts. Making a token will let us make instant copies with World Walker Helm. Tithing Blade is a bit of removal to help buy us time. In the later stages of the game, we can use a duplicator to make token copies of it and essentially get repeated removal when we need it. Patchwork Banner is our mana artifact this time around. It's three mana, so we'll trigger the synthesizer, but it also gives our team a boost. Most of the time we want to name Construct when we play the banner, but there are times when naming Phyrexian for our fleshy would be a good idea. The duplicator is a powerful ally. With it, we get a token copy of any artifact we sacrifice with the journal. This lets us make an endless parade of lodestone needles, tithing blades, synthesizers, and a sneaky artifact we've included in this version that has not seen play before. Up next is the amazing synthesizer. It's our key card that will generate our robot overlord army. They're coming to take over. The helm is another great artifact in the deck. It can easily make a copy of one of our robot overlords or copy any artifact we've sacrificed with the journal. It's a perfect blend that will create a perfect storm of effects to overpower the opponent. It's been an important element in a lot of our synthesizer decks. The Transmogrant Altar is an additional artifact to help build our board. With it, we can sacrifice one of our men for one black and get three colorless mana that we can use to play out further cards. The second ability is likely not one we'll use often since robot overlords are going to be much bigger than the three three tokens the altar generates. Ariette's Tempting Apple is a new artifact that we're using for its ability to steal one of the enemy men. We'll take their guy and use it against the opponent. If we get hits in with their own men, it's a small victory. But if it doesn't die, we can sacrifice it using any of our sacrifice outlets like the journal or the altar. Plus, the apple has its own way of sacrificing itself. With a duplicator in play, we can get endless amounts of apples, a big sack of apples even. Season of Weaving is a powerhouse in the deck. We can use it to draw or make token copies of any creature or artifact. The second ability is one we can use twice and also get a draw. This can easily get us multiple synthesizer tokens. The Flesh Gorger is our life gain. His lifelink goes a long way to keeping us in the game. Plus, he is an artifact, so he'll trigger the synthesizer when we play him out. Fleshy is a monster that can be hard to deal with. If it all goes south, we can try making token copies of him and rule the board with an army of flesh eaters. Our lands include four Fabled Passage, the Fetch Land that gets us a basic from our deck, three Undercity Sewers, the Demir Surveil Land, three Restless Reef, the Demir Shark Land, seven Swamp and seven islands. Playing the deck is usually pretty straightforward. In the early turns, we try to set up our mid and late game with the journal, as well as trying to keep enemy men to a minimum. A synthesizer is key. Getting one in play will let us start generating robot overlords. It is the quickest path to victory, but if we don't have one, try to use the journal to draw into our key pieces. We a sneaky amount of creature control, but use it carefully. For upgrades, you can easily bring in more removals or even some black sweepers. Early men are the deck's greatest threat, so maybe even bounce spells could be brought in to deal with quick threats. That's the deck, boys. Let's go play some games. Do you want to play a game? This is, 
Wait, wait, tell me you're a Jets fan without telling me you're a Jets fan. We're kicking off with a three-lander that includes the critical synthesizer. We've got a journal as well, along with an apple. The weaving is extra gravy. We'll play out our surveil land first. We've got an island on top. We'll keep it as we don't have our mana artifact and we have an apple we'll likely want to get down. With the opponent on Demir, we'll play out the journal first and see if they have a counter. We get it down, but there is a bit of a hitch so they have something in hand. And then they show us who they are. Demir Poison. That might have been what the hitch was, but they're also known to play counter spells. This has to be a synthesizer turn. We'll have to hope they don't have a counter. No counter, but card selection. That will be most of their mana, so we'll get our synthesizer down. We have an altar and a needle on top. We'll take the altar, but if all goes well, they might have to use their men to block, so there won't be much to tap. Let's send the needle on down. They could still have a counter, so let's take a moment. If we get something countered, what can we afford to lose? The altar. It does combo with the apple, but we really want to get the duplicator in play. And sure enough, there's a three steps ahead. On the plus side, we won't get another poison counter this turn, and we've gotten a counter out of the way. It's time to try our duplicator. It'll enable our card draw, plus we can start making tokens out of our artifacts. We get it down. That's absolutely huge. Behold the power of the duplicator. We'll go ahead and sacrifice it with the journal to draw a card. We'll pay the two mana to get the token copy of the duplicator at the end of our turn. And now we grill and chill. At the end of our turn, we get the token duplicator, which gets us another robot overlord. And now the beatings will begin on our next attack step. Prepare. They put us up to four poison, so they have six more to go. But we already have 10 power on board with even more to come next time we untap. It's a race, but it's a race I think we can win. They tap out for a Vraska. That seals their fate. There's no way they can win this turn and they tapped out, so we'll be free to fire off our Season of Weaving to make token copies of our Synthesizer. In fact, that might be... GG's. With two token copies, our robot overlords might be big enough to reduce their life to zero. Let's see if we can get the job done. Sure enough, that looks like our men got upgraded to 1010s, and they explode. They used their counter on the wrong card and they paid the price. This is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. No wait, it's not Christmas time yet. We get another three lander with a tithing blade and a pair of helms. We've got no real action, but we do have plenty of support cards. All we need is to get some good draws and this could work. Keep your pants on. The first play of the game is a novice inspector for them. 
It's not a big threat, and it doesn't give us much information as to what they're really up to. Unfortunately, we get a third helm. Usually we need only one and sometimes two, but three is definitely too many. The tithing blade doesn't work as well once the opponent has a team of men, so we'll play it out and keep the board clear. A lily is bad news. We have cards we can toss, but we also don't have any way to generate men to be able to take down lily. We draw into a fleshy, but we don't have the right mana to play him out. We should play out a helm or the altar, but which one? I'm leaning towards the altar. They land a surprise Elesh Norn. This is a mix of cards that doesn't make much sense to me, but to each their own. They activate Lily once again, and we'll be tossing a helm. By some miracle, we draw into a synthesizer. Let's get it down. We can start generating robot overlords on our next turn. We have an island and a banner on top. Let's drop the island on down, but we'll keep the banner. They can make us toss our cards in hand, but they can't make us toss the cards on top of our library. They fire up their man land. Are they suddenly feeling the need to get some damages in? We'll have to take the hits. They mysteriously don't activate their lily. I know they didn't forget. They probably have cards they don't want to toss. This turn has to be the helm. We'll get our first robot overlord. But let's make more plays. We can use the altar to sacrifice our fresh robot and get three mana. And we can use that to play out the banner. And that will get us another token, and we'll have a bit more mana for cards we draw on future turns. They've got a timely removal, but that was just the beginning. We have more robot overlords on the way. You can take our cards, but you can never take our freedom. Thanks to our plays last turn, we have the black mana to play out our fleshy this time. We'll get a robot overlord along with our scary worm, I was about to use a map token to pump the worm, but let's keep mana up for our helm. We're pretty sure Lily might try to make us sacrifice. They do go for the Lily sacrifice as we thought they would, but we were prepared for that. Let's activate the helm and make a token copy of our robot overlord. In the end, they just made our guy bigger. Space? Oopsie poopsie, bro. They use a big spell to take out our token. And I'm guessing they'll now have the courage to send their Norn in. We'll take the hit this time. We draw a land, so we won't be generating any men this time around, but we do have some map tokens we can use to pump up our fleshy. We have a journal on top. That's good. We'll take it. After pumping our fleshy, we'll go in for a hit on Lily. They can trade by blocking up, and we're perfectly fine if they want to lose their Norn. In a stunning development, they let their Lily go. That was so unexpected. I'm not sure Whatever. what to think. Luck favors the foolish, after all.
they play out their porcelain throne on legs, in case they oopsie poopsie again. We draw our journal. Let's play it out and we can use it to sacrifice the blade and get a draw. We get the mighty key to the vault, but will it unlock? We don't have enough to equip it, but we'll get it down. This time around, we'll hold what we have and let them suicide their men if they want to attack. They must have drawn into that. They use it right away to snipe our synthesizer. What they should have done is used it on our fleshy. Oopsie poopsie, bro. Good thing you got a toilet with legs. Our one guy is holding back their entire team. A season of weaving is absolutely great at this point in time. We have the mana to play it out. The question is, what should we copy or should we use it to draw five? Let's copy our fleshy once and we'll draw three. We get a blade and another banner along with an island. The tithing blade is huge, we can take out one of their men. We don't have the mana for it this turn, so let's hold what we got. They activate their man land. Are they really coming in? Send it, bro. They send only two men. That's gonna clear out the men they would likely have sacrificed to our blades. Chalk this one up as another oopsie poopsie. Good thing they have a toilet on legs. We'll want to play out our banner, then we'll drop the first blade. And to think they had us, but used make your move on our synthesizer. GG's, bro. Nice toilet, by the way. This is crazy eight. No, wait. It's crazy 38, 48. Hut, hut, Mike 49. Omaha, crazy to wear that on your face, I always say. The shuffler special strikes again. We've got a great hand. If only we knew we'd get a third land. Let's not risk it. Mull, the shuffler special strikes again. This time, at least we have black mana so we can play out the journal and the blade. After that, who knows? Let's not go to five. Keep, we'll send the helm on down. It won't be needed anytime soon. We have no tokens to copy. We draw the king of pain. A synthesizer falls in our lap. Now all we need is a third land. Well, look at that. No third land. All we can do is snipe their flying chicken. Or is that a buzzard? Regardless, it has got to go. A lunar convocation makes it stink like bat around here. Pretty sure that's what they'll be on. And it doesn't help any that we're stuck on two lands. We'll probably have to give this one up to the shuffler. We're getting excellent draws if only we had the mana for them. That's a duplicator that really wants extra mana, but all we got is two. The opponent has twice the lands we do, and they can use the power of draw. They double up on their lunar enchantments. 
Surely they must have other plays, right? They've got four mana and that's all they have? It's a Sharkma's miracle. We get a third land, but of course it enters tapped. We'll take it. What choice do we have here? Their pants must be on kind of tight because they're using an enchantment removal on our journal. It doesn't really do much right now, and in the immediate future it'll be a nice ornament. But here we are. The first time we untap with three mana, we plant a synthesizer. All we gotta do is hope they don't have another enchantment removal. It reeks of guano up in here. Oh, there's a pair of bats, the kind that can't block too. That's kind of funny. They're gonna need blockers. We'll play out a banner first, then follow it up with a journal. Our first robot overlord already has more power than their two bats. We'll gladly trade blows. We can't block them, and they can't block us. They double down on the oopsie poopsie. They only outpower our robot overlord by two. And on our turn, we can fix that. We get a surveil land, so we might as well see what we have on top. It's a swamp. We needed lands early, but now not so much. Let's slide it on over. Swipe left, boys. This turn we'll get them with an apple. Do you like apples, bro? How do you like these apples? Let's smash in. After we get our hits in, we can use the journal to sacrifice their bat for another card. The deep cavern bat is a couple business days too late to help out much. We'll gladly play out what they don't take. They plant more non-blockers. That will seal their fate. All we have to do is get a couple of artifacts in play so our robot overlords can reduce them to zero, even with the life gain from the bat that can block. Taking out the life gain guy at the beginning killed them. Don't play bats, kids. GG's, bro. This is Leonardo. No, wait. It's Leop Oldo. Look at his face. Just chill, bro. We get a three-lander to start this one off. We have a removal as well as a journal, but nothing else that makes our deck tick. Still, this is better than a shuffler special. Keep your pants on. They throw down a Celestia land. That could be very good or very bad, depending on what they're playing. We'll play out the journal. It's good to get one early. Anything we don't really need, we can turn into extra cards. We get a Surveil land, and we'll play it out. That's a season of weaving on top, which we will be able to play out with what we already have in hand. We'll be keeping it. And now to snipe their guy. Get gone, girl. Belize is that way. I point to help them out. We'll draw our season after their boy loads up for the trip to Belize. Without anything critical to copy, we could fire it off for five cards on a future turn. They go for ramp that gets them a 1-1 token as well. Interesting. 
I'm sure there will be a caretaker's talent or an innkeeper's talent on the way. Let's use our fabled passage. Maybe it'll help us to stop drawing lands. Then we'll ramp as well. And next time we will be able to fire off the season if we need to. Okay, what do you have, bro? Other than downloading in your shorts. I thought maybe a big play was coming, but it's only more ramp with another token attached. We were on the path to firing off our season, but we drew a synthesizer. It's time to show them how it's done. Synthesize me, bro. Yes, I'll have fries with that. We have another altar on top along with another land. Let's send them both on down. We can draw into better stuff. tribute is their play. It'll make their men bigger, but are they going to be big enough to battle our robot overlords? I'm gonna go ahead and say probably not. They make another token that gets pumped to a decent size, but it's still rather small. They're gonna need a lot, a lot more pump. We delayed it by a turn, but it's time to season it up in here. Tis the season. We'll copy copy and draw one. The synthesizer is what will get copied and that's pretty much going to seal the deal for us this game. They can't possibly come back when we have three synthesizers in play. As an added bonus, we draw into a helm. Yeah, it's GG's. That's another synthesizer on top. LOL, their goose is so cooked. All right, bro. Are you taking 10 or are you blocking? I hope they can squeeze out more tokens. Just two men is not going to cut it. They do manage to pull out a few more blockers, but even with the pump, they are so undersized they won't survive in hand-to-hand -hand combat with our robot overlords. All right, synthesizer number four coming down. The team gets swole and there's more of them. They don't want to see more. And trust me, there was more on the way. And that, my friends, is another satisfied customer.